Oh, one thing um, some of you might have missed from last week, you know, bringing it back to uh, um, not naming oh, of animals. Right. <laughs> so I want to show off the um, the lighting that you did last week in God of 4. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's show that off. So this is me playing in God of 4 with Mikey there. It crashed a few times. Um, but it's just playing with a physical sky, uh, directional light, and two torches. Yeah, I and saw. I still had setting it. an animation player on the directional light. It's just rotating over thirty seconds. Is it fifteen seconds? Yes. And it sets the sky. I don't know if you can see the stars in this. I think it's going to be completely just crushed. about see them. Yeah. Yeah, and it it was amazing the difference in that the lighting was actually making, which I'm going to These play These are the same with. assets we're using with the same colors, but the exactly. lighting engine is so much better that when it goes dark again... Oh, he's moved it. Never mind. Nope, it's, it's going back again. Oh, here we go. Uh, when it gets it. dark, it feels so like dark. densely atmospheric. Yeah. Like, this feels like a, a very different game, and I'm really looking forward to what we can do with this. It also occurred to me that I should play with the uh, particle collisions and see if I can get fog that moves around you as you walk. So the washed outness is not really anything else other than the fact that we stuck a, a, a light in it, a directional light, and sp spun it round and wanted to show off just the lighting rather than, oh, we need to change the lighting for day and night scenes. It's just a directional light moving around. And that is also um, with the new dynamic sky, isn't it, that got over? The new dynamic sky is also the fact that I'm using a single light and very little ambient light. Um, and the single light is not white, but it's very close to white. Mm. And that doesn't tend to happen uh, unless you're in very specific atmospheric conditions. Like, those colours look like high summer in Greece, where it's just like, the stone is glowing white. Like, that light is so fixed. Um, and it will because look lovely have... outdoor scenes. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. We've got an indoor scene that's being lit as outdoors so it will look a little bit washed out essentially and i've got a single very powerful sun which is being bounced off very close to the walls mm -hmm. and it's just bringing out the white like if i if i played with the, the atmospheric effects I'd, I'd get a different thing yeah um in fact we did it, play the, a the lot with cool. um volumetrics as well but volumetrics ended up crashing quite a bit so we're looking did. i can actually see if has that been worked uh, on at the moment I haven't got another version since the last time we looked at this. Um, oh, I don't have it. No. <laughs> I wiped my drive since last week, so I don't have that. Oops. I do have is my test that crashes 80% of the time, where I set up a tool script where if I hide one of the grid, uh, one of the floors, it redoes the navigation mesh to show the, what floors are currently there, which is pretty awesome. Uh, yes, Zach, that's, that's right. The... Um... We we discussed putting a roof onto the actual scene, but decided that yeah. it it would it would be great for that demonstration purpose, but nothing else. And then you wouldn't see the day night cycle either. So we, we so we've mentioned lighting a couple of times. Yeah. Um, some basic tips for lighting, and this comes from my theatre lighting experience. Um, I was a techie. I wasn't a lighting designer. I should point that out. Uh, my father was a lighting designer, but. Um, Tip one, you never see pure white or pure black in nature. They just don't exist. Outside of a lab, they don't happen. So if you put pure white, or in theatre we call it open white, so white with no filter in front of it, onto a scene, it actually looks artificial. If that's what you're going for, you're going for that sci-fi feel, or it's like a real feel, it can be great. But it won't look like sunlight. The white we have here is slightly yellow. Um, and what's happening is... We have a, a grey skewing towards yellow on the wall and yellow light, and it's just, they're adding to each other. It's, it's glowing white. Um, by the same token, shadows shouldn't be pure black. All the shadows in our game are a very slight purple. Yeah. Um, because, the same reason, you don't see pure black. In order to get pure black shadows, you'd have to have pure, black, pure white light and no other light coming in from anywhere. Or just stare into the heart of a black hole. Right, is another option. Um, which is also very disturbing. <laughs> um, actually, pure black is, is really weird to look at. Like I know people who've looked at lab 
created pure black materials and like oh that feels weird well, you, um, you don't get any shading on them because they they do not reflect lights and so there's um I, I i can't remember which youtuber it was but they painted an entire room with vanta black i think this is a trademark yeah, yeah. like super black color and they they were in the position where they had they walked you no in and you, you, you've got no perspective you've got no nothing yeah. things objects in there look weird and isolated Another thing I'll point out is in lighting, you don't ever have just one color. I mean, unless it's very, very artificial. And by artificial, I mean, you're going for a specific style. So if we look at Mikey, for example, because I'm looking at his face right now, he's actually got this, the traditional movie colors. They're actually balanced slightly wrong on my monitor, but that's my monitor. He's got amber on one side and he's got, he's got uh, teal on the other. If you look at me, I've got a lamp over here and shadow over here, but the, the light is bouncing off this shadow. So I've got these quite ghastly, um, what color is that? Mustard blinds over the window. The light is bouncing off that, giving a warmer color on this side. So when you're creating a small little scene, you want to avoid just having the one light. So traditionally in, in camera and in, in theater, we'll start with three point lighting. So you've got yeah. your fill, your key and your back. So this will be my, my key light. This is the one that's showing up. This is my, um, you can't really see it, but the reflection here yep. is my fill that's filling in the detail. So you've got that nice transition. You've got some depth to the face. And then behind you usually use a different color, sometimes a darker color. This looks very flat because it's just bouncing off the green wall. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you you want to be putting in different colors. In our current prototype, all the lights are one color. So when you're running through the, the dungeons, there's just the torch light. What I want to do is start making it so that the torches flicker between colors and adding in those spells with different lights gives the thing a lot more depth. We do also have an ambient light, which is a very, very dark purple so that you're not in complete darkness. But that's my very quick rundown on lighting in scenes. I'd like to add, uh, add to that as well. I think a lot of people when they when they show off their renders or their models, especially if it's in Blender or, or or within the game itself, there's a certain process that a lot of uh, more experienced people will go through. Not only just setting up the appropriate lights, but also, which is half the, half the uh, battle anyway, but also um, a compositing layer afterwards. So you mm. go in and you actually tweak those values so they're more accurate. Lens flare is often added in after the fact if it's not ca captured in camera. And There's another thing correction. that we, we don't really talk about with lighting that will become more of a thing in God of War, playing with their lamps, it's actually possible. Yeah. Um, the sharpness of the light, how sharp or how soft it is. So this is a very blended look on me because I've got the light here, I'm bouncing it deliberately off the wall, I'm not bouncing it directly onto my face so that it looks softer. This one is reflected. Mikey has a much stronger, it's almost like a toon shade line across his face. So you can actually see where the blue stops and the amber starts. Um, but if he bounces it off something, you'll get a much more subtle, like almost firelight, right? There you go. In theater, you'll do this with different lenses, different lighting instruments, different lamps, depending on if you're American or British, will have different lenses. So a Fresnel lens will have the Fresnel diffusion on it, the, the ripples on it, which will uh, break up the lights or the, the photons. So the, the light source looks a lot softer. And then you can move the lens further away from the bulb or close to the bulb and change how sharp that is. Other lights will have a very, very sharp focus. In God of 4, I don't think we can do this in God of 3 yet, but in God of 4, one of the things you can do is change the softness of the light. And that gives you all kinds of things you can play with. So it's not just about the color, it's also the intensity and the sharpness of the light. Yes. In fact, this light here is bounced off the wall to try and blend it a little more. If I if I leave it as a direct light, in fact, both of these, I end up with this weird effect where I have a border down the middle of my face, a rather thick border, actually, with the position of the lights. And it looks odd. I mean, it's certainly... It can be a very cool effect. It I've can seen be, yeah. it up very well. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that's not right or wrong, but there are things that definitely work. Mm-hmm. 